Hey everybody, welcome to Franny Square and to a new session of our Make It Your Own Design series, Designing a Sweater. So if you haven't watched any of the design series before, I'm going to put a link right here to the 10 steps to designing a project, just to give you a little bit of background if you haven't seen it. Today, what I'd like to do is take you through the 10 steps I used to design this sweater. And now this is just prototype one. I never get my designs right on the first try. There may be people out there who do it. I'm not that person. I'm not that talented. And the reason I'm telling you that is because I want you to be fearless. Just give this a try. You make a mistake, you learn from it. That's the way I learn best. I just do it, I make mistakes, and I learn from my mistakes. So don't let that deter you. So the first three steps of my design process is finding inspiration, organizing and strategizing, and choosing a project. And those really happened pretty much all at once for this sweater. Number one, the inspiration was that I had purchased a bunch of Lion Brand Mandala yarn on sale and I really wanted to use it. I had never used it before. I knew Mandala yarn, the yarn that I chose, striped. And so I wanted to do something with stripes. I didn't feel like doing a blanket or a home decor piece. I really wanted to do a garment of some type and since it's still cooler weather out and one of my favorite, favorite pieces of clothing is a cozy, comfy sweater, I decided that I wanted to choose a sweater. Now, as far as my body type goes, I like a sweater with vertical stripes rather than horizontal. I just think it looks better on me. And that goes for the sleeves as well. I don't like sleeves that run horizontally, even if they're not striped, even if just the stitch pattern is horizontal, I start to feel like the Michelin man. So that may not be true for you, but for my design, I wanted to go vertically in the stripes on the body as well as on the sleeves. So these were my basic design ideas and inspiration for this project. So the next step, step four, is making a rough sketch of the project. So I'm going to show you what I did for a rough sketch, keeping in mind the way that I wanted these stripes to go. Okay, so I am not an artist, but I'm just going to quickly sketch my idea for this sweater. So for the sweater, I wanted to have the body pretty much boxy. I wanted a V-neck. And this would be the shoulder here and then just sleeves. Okay, and I wanted my stripes running this way and this way. Okay, that's my rough sketch. That's how rough I make it. Now knowing that when I crochet, my stripes are gonna go like this, that meant I had to make this body piece and turn it. And I decided I wanted to make it one piece that went from the bottom part here up and around the back like that. So it's one long rectangle. So that piece was going to be one long rectangle with the stripes going this way. Okay. So that means I'm going to crochet it this way, which means this, the length of the piece is going to be my number of stitches and the width of the piece is going to be my number of rows. So I had to keep that in mind. I hope that makes sense to you, but I have to turn the piece because when I crochet side to side, that's how my stripes will go. So I have to turn the piece so it's up and down and vertical. Then I knew somewhere in here I wanted a V-neck and I figured I would just make kind of like a, an opening in the center. But if I did it right in the center, then I'd have part of the V-neck on my back and part on the front. I don't like that. So I knew I would cut this piece in half, 
let's just say this is the halfway point, and that's where I would start my slit, right there, like that. That way, it this would be my shoulder seam right here, and the V-neck would happen on the front side of the sweater and not on the back. So that's one thing I decided right there. Then as far as the sleeves go, I just wanted them to be flowy. So I figured I would just do a regular rectangle, no decreasing or anything like that. And I wanted it to be long and to come to my mid hand. So for the sleeves, you can see, they're just gonna be basic rectangles. I'm gonna make two of those with the stripes going this way. So that's the design. My basic design is a three piece design. I have my center piece being my body and I have two of these pieces for each of the sleeves. The next thing I did was decide on a stitch. I've said it many times, the half double crochet is my favorite stitch and I wanted to change it up a little bit so I played around with it and I decided to make a half double crochet stitch but have them crisscross all the way along. And I'll show you how I make that stitch, but I really like the look of it. I made a swatch and decided to go with that stitch. And the swatch is helpful for the next step where I take my measurements and decide how many stitches and rows I need for each of the pieces. So before we go any further, let me just show you this prototype and tell you which things I think worked out really well and which things I think I need to change for the next prototype. So I'm just gonna back up, here we go. So you can see the length here comes right below my bum, which is exactly the way I like it. I like it to be flowy. I like the stripes going vertically. You can see here, this is one of the things I'd like to change. As I was doing it, I got halfway across and my plan was to just work straight across and whatever stripes happened, that would be the look of the sweater. But as I got to the middle, I thought, oh, it'd be really nice if in the middle I had a color and it kind of worked its way out with the same colors. To do that, I had to start another skein of yarn and start it with the color that was in the center and then go out the other direction. I didn't do it perfectly. You can see here, this side's thicker than this side. It was kind of, I was doing it on the fly. For my second prototype, I'm really gonna plan it out and make sure that this stripe goes down the center, continues on. You can see this stops there and is even on both sides. So that's my plan. That's one thing that I will do better. So the V-neck I think came out really nicely. This is exactly the V-neck that I like, the length of the V-neck. So I'm really happy with that. As far as the sleeves go, I wanted a long flowy sleeve. However, I did miscalculate and I'll tell you what went wrong. If you look at the sleeve, I can unroll this twice. <laughs> okay, this is a really long sleeve, way too long. What happened was when I took my measurement for my sleeve, I started here and measured down to the middle of my hand where I wanted it. What I didn't take into account was when I made the body piece, I went from side to side. Well, when you go side to side and fold it over and sew it up, it almost creates like a little short sleeve here, which I actually like. I like starting the sleeve here and having that drop sleeve look, but I didn't take it into account in my calculation. So now I could do one of two things. I could either change the body piece so that it ends here and then have the longer sleeve, or I can just make a shorter sleeve from this point, which is what I think I'm going to choose because I actually like the look of that, the way it just falls over the shoulder. The other thing that I'm not loving about the sleeves is I didn't match them up exactly. So you have different colors on the sleeves. I think I'm gonna to try to make them match better next time. So overall, I'm really happy with the fit of this sweater. I will be changing the sleeves and I'm deciding about maybe putting some ribbing on the bottom of the sleeve and having it blouse rather than just having the flow or just making it shorter and having it flow. I haven't decided that yet. I also toyed with putting an edging around the bottom or some fringes on the bottom. For now, I'm gonna keep it simple and then once I make the second prototype, I can decide if I wanna add some edging or some fringes or some kind of embellishment. Okay, so what measurements did I take? First, I used a tape measure 
And for the length of the sweater, I just went from the center of my shoulder here down to the length I wanted, and I got about 23 and a half inches. I also took out one of my sweaters that I really like and measured that as well, just to make sure I was in the ballpark. So at 23 and a half inches, I wanted to go up my front and down my back. I doubled that number and that became 47 inches that I was looking for the length. Now that means I'm gonna be stitching across and making a 47 inch piece based on the number of stitches. And we'll get into that in a minute. Okay, so that was my first measurement for the length. The next measurement I took was side to side around the biggest part of my chest, wearing a bra, because I want it to fit over my bra, just like that. And I got 21 inches. So I knew that I wanted my rectangle to be 47 inches with the stripes going down. So basically 47 inches wide by 21 inches tall. And then I'm gonna flip the piece because I want my stripes going that way. Then I wanted to know how long do I want my V-neck? So I just went from the shoulder, what would be the shoulder seam down to my V-neck here and that's nine inches. So I figured nine inches would be a nice length and it actually did work out nicely. Now where I made my mistake on the sleeve was I measured, I was thinking my sleeve would start up here down to mid hand and I got 23 inches. But now knowing that my bodice is gonna come here, I'm gonna start down here to measure my sleeve and I'm gonna change that measurement to about, if I don't do ribbing, to about 18, 18 and a half inches. If I do do ribbing, I'll stop a few inches shorter and then start my ribbing there. Okay, so let's take a look at the math on paper. Okay, so the first thing I did was I made a swatch bigger than four inches by four inches because I wanna measure a four inch by four inch piece and I find that I'm most consistent when I'm on a roll in the middle of the swatch. So what I would do is, as long as I have a piece bigger than four by four inch, I will start somewhere in the center of that swatch. And I usually start on the one, not the beginning, because I'm not sure if it's exactly the zero. And I'll put it on a row, and I'll count the number of rows till I get to five, four inches. And for this swatch, I got nine and a half rows in four inches. And I do the same thing for my stitches. I start on a stitch with the one and I'll go to the five and I'll count my number of stitches across. And for this, I got 17 stitches in four inches. So for a four inch by four inch swatch, I had 17 stitches and nine and a half rows. Okay, so let's just start with the body piece. Now, again, it's gonna be a rectangle Okay, so here's the body, and I, this is my shoulder line. So this is going to be from my shoulder to the bottom of the sweater, and this is going to fold over my shoulder and be the back of the sweater. But I'm doing it all in one piece. When I measured from my shoulder to the where I wanted the bottom of my sweater, I got 23 and a half inches. So I want that same amount for the back piece as well. So the entire length of this is going to be 47 inches, okay? Two times 23 and a half. So to figure out, now remember, I'm gonna be crocheting this direction because this is the way the stripes go. So this will be my stitches across and this will be my rows going down. 
So to figure out how many stitches I need for 47 inches, all I do is I take my number, 17 stitches per four inches. So if I were to divide 17 by four, that would be how many stitches per inch, and then I need 47 inches, so I'm gonna multiply that by 47. And I get 199.75, I believe it is. Yes. And I'm just gonna round that to 200 stitches. Okay, so I need 200 stitches, and at the 100th stitch is where this is going to fold over. Now, for the rows, I know I want this to be 21 inches wide, because I measured from my side to my side. So remember, I'm crocheting this direction, so this will be the number of rows. So for... From my swatch, I had nine and a half rows per four inches, so that's how many rows per inch, times 21 inches, and that gives me 49.875 rows, okay? This is my length of my sweater, and this is my width of my sweater, just for the body piece. Now, rather than rounding up for the rows, I'm actually going to round down to 49. I feel that I was pretty loose in my measurement, and I want an odd number. I don't want to go up to 51. So I'm going to go and use 49 rows. Now, why do I want an odd number? Well, if you remember, in the front is where I'm going to make my V-neck, about halfway. So I want a middle row. If I have an even number, I don't have an exact middle row. I have two middle rows. So I'll have 24 here, 24 here. That's 48. And then this will be the 49th row, my middle row there. And that's where I can do my V-neck so that it's right in the middle. Now, my V-neck, I want to be 9 inches. 9 inches this direction. So again, this direction is stitches. This is the way I'm going. So for my V-neck, I have 17 stitches per four inches times nine inches. And that gives me 38.25 stitches. So I rounded that up to 40 stitches just to make it even. And when I made it and tried it over my head, I liked that, so I kept it. Okay, so that is the body piece. I have the number of stitches, the number of rows, and my V-neck figured out. Now, for the sleeves, I'm going to change my sleeve this time. I'm gonna make it shorter, and I'm going to do 18 inches. I'm going to still leave it a bell sleeve. I'm not going to do the ribbing. That's what I decided. So my sleeve, if you remember, looks like this with the stripes going this way. And I want the 18 inches this direction, <clears throat> which is the direction that I'll be crocheting. So I need to know the number of stitches. So again, I have 17 stitches per four inch times 18 inches. And that gives me 76.5 stitches. So I'll probably just round that up to 77 stitches. And when I get to that point, I'll hold it up to my arm, see how it looks and uh, just make sure that I like that. The other number we need is the number of rows for the sleeve. So to find the length that I wanted here, I forgot to show you, but I measured around the biggest part of my arm up top and I got 15 inches 
For the width of the sleeve, I did nine and a half rows divided by four. That gives me the number of rows per inch times 15 inches. And that gave me 35.625 rows. So I'm just gonna round that up to 36 rows per sleeve. So now I basically have my recipe for making the sweater. Now, if you've followed along, hopefully you're taking your own measurements and doing your own calculations. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do the stitch that I used on this sweater. And I'm just gonna use this light yarn because it'll be easier for you to see. All right, so I'm gonna start out by chaining an even number of stitches. And you'll wanna chain an even number plus two for the number of stitches you want. So for example, if I want 200 stitches, I'm gonna chain 202. So here I'm just gonna chain 12 for 10 stitches. Okay, now in the third chain from the hook, I'm going to do a half double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. I have three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three. That's a half double crochet. I'm going to do that in each stitch all the way down. And this is just setting up my base row for me to then show you the stitch. You can actually, for the pattern, launch right into the stitch from the chains, but I just thought that this would be easier to see. There we go, I have a half double crochet in each stitch and now I'm gonna chain two and turn. Okay, so to make this stitch, all I do is I skip the first stitch and I put a half double crochet in the next stitch. Then I'm gonna go back to the skip stitch and put a half double crochet in that stitch. Now, I make sure that I go to the next stitch because we use this stitch first and then this one second. So this is the next stitch. I'm gonna half, I'm gonna skip that stitch and I'm gonna half double crochet in the next, right there. You get used to looking at this. Now I'll go back to the skip stitch here and I'll half double crochet in that. And do that all the way across. Now these two stitches have been used. I'm, I'm going to skip the next stitch and go into the stitch after that. And then come back to the skip stitch here. And just do that all the way across, skipping the next, going into the next. And then come back to the skip stitch and do a half double crochet there. And now I'm on to the last two stitches. I'm going to go into that last stitch. And back to the skip stitch right there. and then chain two and turn. And now you can see there's the stitch. 
going across. And all I did was repeat that row two the entire time for each part of the sweater. So again, I would skip this first stitch, half double crochet into the next, go back to the, stip, the skip stitch, and then just continue. You can see how pretty that's looking. Okay, so once I made my swatch, I did the math, then I began making my pieces. And once the pieces were complete, I sewed it together. Now, without going into too much detail, because I am going to do a tutorial on this sweater, basically what I did was I had the big rectangle, which is the front and back piece. I laid that out flat. Then I took each of the sleeves and laid it out on the side of the rectangle, long way going out. And I matched the center of each sleeve to the center of the big rectangle. So basically I had a big plus sign. Then I folded it in half front to back and the sleeves automatically folded in half. And I sewed up the side and down the arm. And what I liked about this construction is I don't have shoulder seams which is really nice. So basically that is the design process for this sweater. And pretty much most of my projects, I design the same way going through that same process. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what I do and how I come up with my designs. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below or send me an email to my email address at frannysquare at gmail.com. I will get back to you as quickly as I can. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you're interested in making this sweater, I hope you'll look for the tutorial that will be coming out soon. I'm gonna start filming that shortly. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Remember to make it your own and I'll see you soon.